Assalamu alaikum. This is lecture one of information and communication technologies, and in this lecture, I'm going to describe the fundamental concepts about computers, the components of the computers, and the basic usage of computers for the humanity. Then there will be some discussion about different types of computers, and finally this chapter will conclude with the discussion of computer software which is the fundamental part of computer system so if you define the computer system generally computer system is an electronic device which computes some operations to give you your desired result usually it converts the data into some form of useful information that means you provide the raw data and you get the meaningful information so in modern terms the computers are digital however if you took the root of history of computers there are computers in the older times that were analog so we will discuss both kind of computers so the fundamental use of computers is for the individual use and for the commercial use. In the individual use, there are several types of computers. And most commonly, we encounter the computers called desktop computers. And it is a common type and it sits on a desk or floor. Therefore, these are called desktop computers. And these are most commonly used for performing a variety of talks such as accomplishing a document draft or surfing over the internet then there are some workstations which are specialized and optimized for scientific and graphical usage these are more powerful than desktop and are used in a more constrained environment so these are much similar to the desktop but have more processing and storage power then there is a type of notebook computers which are often referred as laptops these are small portable computers that you can carry in your bags these are typically as powerful as desktop and some of the laptops have a docky station where you can install the laptops to use however modern notebook computers are without the docking station and you can easily port them from one location to another another type of computer which is quite prevalent these days is the tablet computers again the portability is the major advantage in these type of computers and these usually run specialized versions of office products or other kinds of applications so typical examples are ipads and different other tablet computers then we have handheld computers these are very small computers and often referred as personal digital assistants these are very useful for taking notes or contact management however these are not very popular and there are very limited applicability for the individual use so these two types of computers such as handheld and tablets are mostly converted to a form called smartphones these are hybrid of cell phones and personal digital assistants and you can in today's environment you can achieve any computing power that you want to achieve from tablets or handheld computers through the smartphone and these are very useful for using current day-to-day uh, -day applications web surfing email access and other normal daily life activities so the second most prevalent usage of uh, computers is for the organizations 
and organizations use computer for multifarious purposes. First of all, we have network servers and you must be well aware that all of the communication which takes place on a network is directed to or towards or through a network server. These are usually centralized computers and all other computers connect through a communication medium. The network servers usually provide access to network resources. For example, you have limited access to number of printers or other computing powers. Therefore, you make a server so you provide access to a number of nodes. So you can also use a powerful desktop computer to make it as a network server. Then there is another type which is used for large organizations and these types of computers are called main frames. Usually these handle a lot of users especially if you have this requirement of more than 1000 users you will prefer mainframe computers and users access through a terminal which is uh, widespread towards uh, inside an organization or outside the organization. Organizations also use mini computers which are called mid-range computers and they have the power between mainframe and a desktop and it can also handle more than 100 users. So if you have few users, uh, few hundred users, you should uh, employ mini computers in the organization. And typically these are preferred for usage in the smaller organizations. And users have access again through a terminal much like the mainframes. The final type of our organizations is the supercomputers and these are the most powerful computers ever made and these handle the large and complex calculations and these process trillions of operations per second and these are usually found in the research organizations or mega organization which uh, serve a large number of customers throughout the world. So this leads us uh, to the another definition which includes parts of the computer system. So these are parts of a basic computer system. Computer system is usually comprised of four parts. The first of all is the main component which is called hardware. Hardware is a, consists of mechanical devices in the computer and anything that can be touched with the computer system is called hardware. The second rudimentary part of the computer system is the software and the software tells the computer what to do and it is often called a program and if you uh, observe the current environment there are millions of software or millions of programs that exist for your usage. Then there are two external or supplementary parts of the computer system. Without these supplementary parts, hardware and software cannot be uh, well useful for the user. So the fundamental part again is the data and the user. So data is the pieces of information which computer organized and present to the user and the users are the people operating the environment and the, these are also most important part and they tell the computer what to do. So let's elaborate the computer hardware. There are some essential computer hardware parts and there are some supplementary computer hardware parts. So most basic computer hardware part is the processing devices. Usually these are termed as central processing units or CPUs. These are the brains of the computer which perform all the processing and it carries out instruction 
from the written program which is usually written by the users or the programmers these programs are used to manipulate the data and most computers have several processors and these processors are called secondary processors so main processor is responsible to assign tasks to secondary processors another essential part of computer hardware is the memory devices which stores the data or the running program and there are two types of memory which is commonly used is read random access memory and read only memory random access memory is in short ram is a volatile memory and it stores current data and the program and once you turn off the power the stored data and program will vanish so usually if you have a more ram it will result in a faster system because your system has larger capacity to incorporate data and programs so read only memory is the permanent storage of program and it holds the computer boot directions so read only memory is used in the devices where you have the stored program then there are another uh, essential computer hardware to computer hardware devices which are input and output devices so input devices accept the data for example you can use the keyboard and the mouse or in the digital term you can use the touch screen pad to enter the input there are output devices to deliver data such as monitor printer and speaker and there are some storage devices which hold the data for the programs permanently so these are different from the memory devices because memory devices are volatile and they hold the data for the temporary usage and these storage devices hold the data permanently so these are often complemented with the read only memory in the current use of the smartphones so in the older terms these were floppy and hardware drives and which used magnet to access the data and there were cd and dvd drives which used the laser to access the data however this has changed dramatically and currently solid state disks are used for storage as well as read only memory the other parts uh, which we discussed in the previous slides were the data and the users so data again is the raw input information it is the fact with the no meaning on its own it is your input or your input draft in a word document the data is stored using the binary number system so we will discuss about the binary number system in the upcoming lectures so binary number system or binary language is the language of computers it is the zero and one form or in other electrical terms it is the signal on and signal off form and more generically data is organized into files then we have users and the role depends on the ability of the user that they can perform for example user can set up the system install the software manage files and maintain the system and there are some exemptions where userless computers also exist which run on the no user input and these are often termed as automated systems so whenever we are dealing with the information and computer system we are more concerned with the information processing and in computer system we have a information processing cycle which consists of four 
basic operations and these operations are input processing output and storage so computer is usually has a program which directs these four operations for example the user may be asked to enter an input to a program and then the program performs some processing and it outputs some information to the user and then storing the information on the permanent storage so we discussed about the uh, we mentioned the program direction what are the program direction first we have to define what is a program a program is a sequence of instructions that tells the computer how to perform these four operations in order to accomplish a task so whenever you program the computer you write a program which tells the computer what to do and how to perform all these processing steps so this will constitute a information processing cycle so let's discuss more about the input and output so most of you will be familiar with the usage of information systems or computing systems so when the computer asks you to provide the input you provide it using the input devices but when you are required to provide the input into the system as a developer you ask the user to provide the input so you use the common verbs such as read from the input or get the input so for example you or writing an essay in the MS Word program. So as a programmer, you will ask the program to read input or get input from the input devices. Or in other words, computer reads or gets two values to add them up. Similarly, when a computer is required to perform output to a device, then the words print write and output or display is used in the program or the pseudo code the pseudo code is a code to represent the program instruction so usually an output prompt instruction is required before an input get instruction for example you may ask the user or you write a print statement saying that enter two values and then write the get statement to, to get those two values into two variables so the other two steps of the information processing cycles are processing itself and the storage so computer may perform a number of processing operations and these operations are arithmetic and comparison or logical operation so when we will discuss about the processing uh, or processor we will come to know that the processor have two parts the arithmetic and the logical unit and a control unit so in the ALU arithmetic and logical unit we have arithmetic operations and logical operations so arithmetic operations are simple mathematical calculations formulas and for these a programmer uses either actual mathematical symbols or the words for the symbols for example you can use add 5 plus 2 5 comma 2 or you can use 5 plus 2 as a whole then there are comparison operators and a computer can compare two variables and select one or two alternate actions so these are equivalent operators when two, two values are equal greater than operator less than operator greater than equal to operator less than equal to operator and not equal to operator so any information is stored in some location 
in the memory and that location is called the variable so we will discuss about the variables in detail in some other lectures so talking about the storage you may come across three different situations when you need to store a value to a variable or a memory location so first you may give data an initial value in the sudo code the verb initialize or set are used to create or initialize a new variable for example you want to start with the program with the name and you provide the name of yourself as an initial value you may assign a value as a result of some processing symbol so in that case you may use the arrow symbol or the equal symbol for example for the same name you want to get the input from the user and you may write name is equal to input from the user but the third situation may be to keep a variable for later use so for example you can use the save or the store variable to access the variable at the later stage so here are the some of the examples so after a brief introduction about the fundamental computer hardware and software components and the information processing cycle and how the information is processed and stored in computer let's move back our focus to the types of computers so as you know we have discussed about several types of computers such as supercomputers mainframe computers workstations and micro computers there is an another type of computer that is called micro controllers and these are often called embedded computers these computers are very small and specialized microprocessors which reside inside appliances and automobiles for example you may come across a simple computer in the washing machine or microwave oven software is a program that tells the computer what to do and the software of the machine is one of the cardinal indicators for people to purchase a computer and software may be classified into two dimensions the system software and the application software system software is the most important software for the machine and it is often referred as operating system and utility software and some machines may require a network operating system which runs over the network the other type of the software is the application software which are the normal application which are beneficial to achieve the desired task for the consumers so on the overall the software whether it is system software or application software it tells the computer what to do to accomplish a specific task so let's dig deeper into the exploration of application software application software consists of programs designed to make user more productive and or assist with personal tasks so these softwares may be classified into a number of subdomains for example package software custom software web applications open source software shareware freeware and public domain software so we will briefly look at each type of the software in short details so the most common type of software is the packaged software and it is also referred as commercial software 
it is the software that must be purchased so usually when a company develops a software for generic people or wide variety of users these software is called the packaged software so therefore this software meets the needs of wide variety of users and not just a single user or the company packaged software is an application that performs only one type of task or related task relate, relating to the single task domain so a word processing program a graphical program or an email is an example of the packaged software packaged software is available in retail stores or on the web the second most common type of the application software is the custom made software which is the stand alone software and it performs functions specific to a business or industry it solves only one type of the problem and it is customized for the use of particular users sometimes a company cannot find the package software that meets its unique requirements in that case the company may use programmers to develop tailor made custom software usually it costs more than the package software because it is specifically designed for limited customers then there are some softwares which are classified as web application a website that allows user to access and interact with software from any other computer or device that is connected to the internet therefore many websites provide free access to their programs some charge a fee types of web application software include email word processing text preparation and game program the other type of software is the open source software which is widely famous for the developers these are programs distributed for the use with the source code which is the utmost important uh, which has the utmost important for the developers it allows users or developers to modify the software and redistribute those software to further users software has no restriction from the copyright holder regarding modification of the software internal instructions and its redistribution to other users source code is usually available in editable formats as there are many development libraries that are used to create applications modification and comments are welcome linux and open office are two most uh, important examples of the open source software software may also be classified as the cost associated with them so there are some shareware software and it gets its name from the fact that it developers encourage user to share it with one another and then try out the software before purchasing it there are many examples uh, where you try before you buy so they distribute the free trial uh, for a specific period for example for one month or six months etc typically the user is allowed to a certain number of days or to work with the software before registering or paying for it and if you do not want to continue you may deactivate it so in some cases a scaled down version of the software is distributed free and you have to pay to get the pro versions there is another kind of software which is totally free is called freeware software and it is the close cousin to shareware copyright software is provided at no cost by the individual or the company that retains all the rights to the software and there is no obligation to purchase however if you want to donate to the developers these donations are accepted and the software may also be distributed freely so 
if you want to use the shareware or freeware program, you must abide the terms of a license that prohibits you from making the changes to the software or selling it to someone else. And finally, there are public domain software which are also freeware but with no copyright restriction. Donations again from public, uh, these are developed by donated funding of the public and these are for the public use and it has no copyright restriction. Anyone can copy or distribute the public domain software to others at no cost. Additionally, no compensation is usually expected and the source code is free for anyone to use or any purpose whatsoever. Software sometimes are packaged as a software suite. A software suite is a collection of individual programs available together as a unit. These are integrated tools that work together. For example, the Microsoft Office family is one of the examples. So these software suites solve many problems which are associated or closely linked with each other. So it will result in a lower cost and ease of the use. Software programs that are very commonly used such as word processing software, spreadsheets, web authoring tools and email programs are often together packaged and sold as a software suites. For example, as I mentioned earlier, Microsoft Office family of products is one of the examples in which we get Microsoft Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, Access, etc. as well as more special purpose suites like a core family of graphics software or the Adobe family of the graphics software. So an ex excellent example is to create a letter in a word and then in Excel create a simple spreadsheet and link the spreadsheet into the letter, arrange both products onto the screen and change the spreadsheet and letter should update automatically. Similarly, if you want to use the Adobe product, you can create a graphics in the Microsoft, uh, sorry, Adobe Illustrator and then modify that graphics in the Adobe Photoshop. So there are some typical uh, traditional steps involved in installation, registering and activation of the software. So if you are working with an old environment software, you have to install, register and activate the software. However, if you are working with the most advanced applications, you only have to use it through your internet access. So if you are going to, towards the traditional way, you have to purchase or download the software and then you have to install it. And during the installation, the program may ask you to register or activate the software. And if you register the software, you may provide some additional information which is required by the manufacturer of the developer. However, this is an optional step in most of the software. Uh, if you choose to register the software and it often entitles you to the product support and some softwares are paid and which requires activation. Product activation is a technique that some software manufacturers use to ensure that software installed on more, not installed on more computers than legally licensed. Registering or activating the software also entitles you to free program updates for a specified time period such as a year. So the second branch of the software is the system software which serves as an interface between the user and the application software and the computer hardware. Operating system is one of the most used system software. System software also include that programs which control the operations of the computer. These are not limited to utility programs only but the programs to achieve the basic computer input and output tasks or 
storage or retrieval and access tasks. So to conclude the discussion about the softwares, we have to define some software terms or screen items for software. So if you are using a desktop based or tablet based computer, you often come across with the word window. So window is a rectangular area of the screen that displays a program data or information so it can include a title bar where the title of the window is displayed a status bar menu icons scroll bar etc there are some small windows called dialog boxes which show a special window that provides information presents available options or requests a response Dialog boxes often contain option buttons, text boxes, check boxes, and other command buttons. Some softwares are used in the business and these are represented as business software. The business uh, application or the business software is an application software that assists people in becoming more effective and efficient in while performing the business activities so these are some examples of the business software which are common in the office environment so let's look at few of these in short detail so there are some word processing software which provide you to create word documents such as letter reports or other form of textual information so word processing features include some auto correct auto format or the collaboration features between the users you may have the functionality to write in a number of columns and check the grammar along with the other features listed here So if you want to develop a text document, uh, a major advantage of using word processing software is that user can easily change what they have written. So word processing software will allow you to do that. So you can create a document, enter some information and then edit the document and make changes to existing content and insert new document and finally you can format the document to change the appearance. There are other examples of software such as uh, notepad or note taking software application software that enables users to enter type text, handwritten comments, drawings or sketches anywhere on the page. Notes are the typical example in the computers and smartphones for this kind of software. Notes are organized like a notebook into the system. So some softwares are often served as a personal information manager which include to cater the needs of appointments, calendars, contacts and notes facilities. So you can take the information previously tracked in a weekly or daily calendar and organize and store it on your computer. So most of the personal digital assistants and many smartphones include such kind of application functionality which synchronizes with the personal computers or other storage online. So appointment calendar, address books or notepads are some of the example you can also incorporate a to-do list or to-do application which is which merge quite well with these kind of systems you can also use some softwares for data organization for example to store the information 
organized by the name and user may search for the data for example you can search for the chat in your chat application or you can search for the contacts or other notes information in your other related applications or you can search for the appointments or set reminders at the uh, calendar or contact information so that is the end of today's lecture and if you want to study more about the topics you can go through the reference material if you have any question you can ask me through any of the designated medium such as whatsapp email or you can create a question and answer session in microsoft teams thank you very much